Hello everyone and welcome to another cartography lecture video and in this lecture video I want to begin actually talking about map projections. Right, so in the previous two videos we sort of set the stage talking about how we can measure our location on a three-dimensional sphere or in the actual case it's an ellipsoid Right, and we, we left off by saying that we could have different ellipsoids that would have different relationships to optimize different locations. So now we're going to set all of that aside and assume now that we know the datum, we have some latitude and longitude, and we want to take that data and we want to create a two-dimensional map, right? Because your computer screen or a piece of paper, right, those are two-dimensional surfaces. And so this idea is how do we take a three-dimensional globe and put it onto a two-dimensional surface. And the mathematics behind that is called map projections. So to put it more simply, right, we have a three-dimensional location, right, longitude and latitude, which again are those angles that we spent so much time talking about. And we want to convert that to a 2D right, coordinate system, something that we can put on a piece of paper. So this would be our traditional sort of X and Y. Now, a lot of times when you hear people talk about projections, they talk about taking a piece of paper and wrapping it around a ball. And that's actually a really good description. But what you will hopefully notice if you ever tried to do this is that it's impossible to do that perfectly. You will always end up in this process with some sort of distortion. And so what I want to do is I actually want to break this up into two separate videos. The first video is talking about some of the key concepts of map projections, and then the se a second video talking about this idea of distortion and how we, some of the terminology that goes into addressing the types of distortion that can occur. So let's walk through a map projection. The first thing we have to do before we do anything else is figure out our scale. Right. And when I'm talking about scale, what I'm talking about here is what's called the reference scale or the principal scale. And basically what this is, is this is the size relationship between the real world and what's called the reference globe. the map is based on. So you can think of this reference scale, right, as if we have the real world. If we were to shrink the real, real world down to a much smaller globe, Right, the size relationship between this real world and this imaginary thing we call a reference globe. Right, this size relationship this is our reference scale. And you will oftentimes hear people, hear map cartographers talk about scale, right, in the sense of a scale bar or a map scale, right, that is, that is essentially the same thing as a reference scale. And so, for example, if we have a ten to one scale, right, this means that every one unit on the map 
is equal to 10 units. in the real world. Right? And so if we had a, a line that was say 100 kilometers long, right? So 100 kilometers in the real world would be 10 kilometers on the map. Now that's an insanely large scale, right? Typically you're going to see something in the thousands, hundreds of thousands and millions. But this is the idea of reference scale, right? It's the relationship between the real world and the size that we want our map to ultimately be. So once we've figured out what size we're going for, right? Once we've created this reference globe at the right, at the scale that we want, the next thing we have to do is we have to create what's called the developable surface. Now, you'll often hear this idea of developable surface as talking about, again, taking a piece of paper and wrapping it around a globe. And so you can imagine here, if I take three different, we're gonna do this in two dimensions here. Right, if I were to take, if I were to take three circles here, right? And I wanted to wrap a piece of paper around these circles. I have three approaches that I could take. The first would be to wrap the paper up like a cylinder, think similar to like a toilet paper roll, right? And set that around the reference globe like this. Right, and we've made ourselves take a cylinder, wrap a cylinder around it. This is called a cylindrical map projection. Right, the next option that we could do would be to wrap the piece of paper up into a cone. Think of like when you were a little kid and you had those party hats with the little string. Right, you can do the same thing and you can imagine the earth as your head. Right, you could take, you could wrap it up like a cone. Right, and you could do something like that. This is called a conic projection. The third option would be to just leave the piece of paper flat and simply set it on the earth. Right. When you do that, this is called a planar projection. All right, so again, we have cylinder, where we wrap it up like a cylinder, drop it on. We have a conic projection, where we almost make like a party hat. And then we have this planar projection, where we just take the piece of take the developable surface and we just set it flat on the earth. Okay. So I'm actually going to stop the video here with this idea of developable surfaces and we're going to pick up in another video where we're going to talk about what we do with these developable surfaces and why the choice matters. So hopefully this made sense and as always if you have any questions please reach out. Thank you.